Hey, what's up guys? Victor here with Individual Investor. In this occasion, I would like to cover a performance metric that you pretty much hear about on every earnings call. We will talk about EBITDA and I will show you how you can calculate it yourself using Facebook's 10K report. Before diving into EBITDA, let's quickly talk about earnings. Earnings is often referred to as net income, and net income is the amount of money that a company makes over a period of time after paying things like interest on any debt and also after paying taxes. There is also something called depreciation and amortization, which represent the amount or value that all tangible and intangible assets lose over time. Assets don't have an infinite utility, so as they are worth less over time, this amount needs to be subtracted from the net income over time as well. Now, if you want to do a fair apples to apples comparison between two companies using the net income of earnings, the challenge with that approach is that these items that I just mentioned have very little to do with the actual performance of these two businesses. Interest paid on debt has to do more with how the company is funded rather than its performance. Taxes are very important, but they don't provide a strong signal for performance either. And depreciation and amortization can be subject to accounting tactics since they can change depending on the type of assets and the method used to depreciate or amortize those assets. Here is where EBITDA comes to the rescue. EBITDA stands for Earnings Before Interest, Taxes, Depreciation and Amortization. In simple terms, we just take the earnings and we add back all that money that we spend on interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization. So we arrive at a figure that represents more clearly the ability of the business to generate income. An easy way to calculate EBITDA is to go to the income statement and find the operating income or income from operations, which already includes the addition of the interest and taxes, and then go to the cash flow statement and find the depreciation and amortization for the same time period. And then you add those to the operating income and that will give you EBITDA. To illustrate how you can use EBITDA to analyze two companies, I would like to show you guys this example from Investopedia that explains this very well. So here we have two hypothetical companies, company A and company B, and they both have produced exactly the same net income of $8 million over a period of time. However, company A has a larger or higher EBITDA than company B. Company A's EBITDA is $20 million and company B's EBITDA is $17,500,000. Now, this raises the following three points. The first one, it seems that company B has some room there to bump up their EBITDA by maybe borrowing some money that they could use to source potential growth and increase their value in the future. Point number two, if we assume that both companies have similar a similar amount of debt, then company A seems to be paying a lot more in interest. So this could mean that company A has a lower credit score and that's why they, could, they couldn't secure a low interest rate for their uh, loans, which means that they are a more risky company to invest in. And then the last point, we can see that in terms of depreciation and amortization, company B has a higher amount of depreciation and amortization. So this means that company B has more assets than company A. However, company B has been generating less EBITDA with more assets, which could translate into some management inefficiencies or underutilization of those assets. All right, cool. So now that you know how to use EBITDA, let's check out Facebook's 10K report and calculate EBITDA ourselves. So here we have the SEC filings for Facebook and I already have the, the 10K form here. Let me open that up. I'm going to zoom in. So let's go to the table of contents. 
the first thing we need to do is check the financial statements and then we need to go to the income statement or statements of income and here for the year 2020 okay all we need to do here is find the income from operations over here and we can see that the income from operations is 32,671 this is this figure is actually in millions okay so this is roughly 32 billion dollars okay so let me open my calculator here and type 32.671 billion dollars great and now we need remember that the income from operations already includes the interest and taxes in the figure okay so all we need to do is just go back to the table of contents and find the statement of cash flows so let's go to financial statements and now we're going to go to statement of cash flows here i'm going to scroll down and here we have under cash flows from operating activities uh, here we have uh, depreciation and amortization okay and again this figure is already in millions of dollars so that's 6.862 uh, billion dollars so let me just add that to the previous figure plus 6.862 all right perfect so that gives us a total of 39.5 33 billion dollars this is facebook's ebitda for 2020 now what i did as well i opened up uh, the facebook page on morningstar to actually verify that the ebitda calculation is accurate so if we go to facebook here um, i'm under here operating performance because remember ebitda is an operating or is a is a performance figure if i scroll down here to EBITDA for 2020 we see that the va the value here is yeah indeed 39.53 billion dollars okay so that's the value that we just calculated okay EBITDA is useful as well when analyzed over a period of time to understand the trend for a particular company or group of companies there are also ratios like the EBITDA margin debt to EBITDA ratio or enterprise value to EBITDA ratio that help in determining the valuation or financial position of a company. I will cover those ratios in separate videos, so please stay tuned. And if you don't mind, please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel to support me in making more videos like this. With that, thank you guys for joining and I'll see you next time.